We have Mike Damboise on this episode to talk about his own experience with ranching and commercial real estate and how he can help property owners in similar situations make their money work for them. We hope you enjoy. In Our Expert Opinion Podcast is brought to you by SVN Saunders Ross and Danza Real Estate, a full service land and commercial brokerage with almost $4 billion in transactions since 1996. We are back today on In Our Expert Opinion Podcast, and I'm the host, Linda, and I have my co host, Chad Mills, who will be jumping in from time to time whenever I am um, in over my head. And over your head. I yeah. bet you you don't get there very often. You'd be surprised. You would be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a very special guest here, Mike Damboise. And I just learned how to pronounce your last name. And I will keep it a secret for everybody else. But I hope I pronounced it right. You did. Damboise. Yeah. You can say Dambois, but it's a little, that's a little funky. But yeah. Um, Damboise is better. So okay. Like, like damn girls, remember? <laughs> yes, I do remember. Um, and, uh, you are brand new to Saunders Ralston Dantzler. Brand new. Yes. And that's a mouthful to say, by the way. I, I have to repeat it two or three times every time I'm on the phone. I, I'm still doing it myself, trying to, trying to get that. It's hard, just a mouthful. It's so, people but, are like, what? I'm like, uh, Saunders, you know, I, or I just pick one of the broker's last names and go with it. Right. Right. Well, so, somebody's going to know one of them, you know. Exactly. Usually. Well, when we first started the podcast, we were saying SVN, and then we would jump over and be like SRD. Then we'd say Saunders Ralston Dantzler, and we'd say Saunders Real Estate. And we're like, all right, at some point, we got we to gotta tell everybody what we're talking about, what acronyms <laughs> that we're using. I S- know. SRE. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. But... um. The, like I said, the good thing is someone's going to know one of the three brokers. So absolutely, you know, we we try to give them credit where credits due around here because well, they pay for this podcast. So they deserve they deserve <laughs> a lot of credit, and I'm, well, I'm just really thrilled to be here. And I want to thank oh. you too for inviting me on. As well. Oh my gosh, thanks for coming on. Everybody was really excited in the office. Um, you know, they were saying that I had to get you on the podcast immediately. And they asked me if I had met you because you are a helicopter pilot. Yes. And I think that is very cool. I don't know that I've ever met a, a helicopter pilot, but is it, I ha, it's different than a fixed wing. Okay. Airplane. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very different. Okay. Oh. And how did you come about? getting your license oh well it's I, I really was planning always wanted to be a pilot and was getting ready to get my fixed wing to start my training and uh, a buddy of mine came to the ranch and uh, and he was in his helicopter and he sat down by the house and we were gonna barbecue him and his wife we were gonna we were cooking steaks or something and I, I had a bunch of cattle on ryegrass at, that needed to be drove off the rye grass and that time of year you you it's just what you do you drive them off the rye grass so they they don't camp on it all day long when you when you plant it it's kind of a it's a really good feed for cattle anyway so we're going to drive these cattle off the rye grass i told him come on we'll jump on a buggy and we'll run back there be gone about 30 minutes he says let's take my helicopter and i was like <laughs> my cattle don't know what a helicopter is but anyway a 30 a 30 minute job turned into a five minute job and and then as uh, as we were run the cattle through the through the gate, and I I got out and shut the gate, and we picked back up, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, I got a water trough down there spewing, you know, it was busted. I set me down, I fixed that, and uh, and and we picked back up, set back at the house, and I was like, that's it, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so now, eleven years later, twelve years later, whatever it is, I, I I've had two now. That's incredible. And so I think you said you got a four seat. Yes, I, I, I had a uh, an R twenty two Robinson R twenty two for uh, uh, five or six years, and I this past summer I bought an R forty four with four seats and AC. You gotta have the AC oh, in well, Florida. I don't yes. know how you uh, were. You said eleven years. Yeah, I've been flying. Yeah, li- yeah, about eleven. Years. I don't know how you went eleven years with no AC out there. That's oh gosh, it was. Uh, but but you. 
with a with an R twenty two, you fly with the doors off. So okay. It's not really. It's not hot. Okay. So, okay. But it's not cool either. Yeah. You know, well, no, maybe it's cool, but it's not cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Temperature wise, and have your cows gotten used to the helicopter? Uh, yes, and they it's they are it's so helpful. I've, I've gathered cattle in my helicopter, and we uh, hunt gator nest. You know, I, I we will fly and and. Um, we got a GPS with us, and when we see a gator nest, we GPS the gator nest, and then the airboats come in and harvest the eggs. No so, kidding. Yeah. Now, I sold um, a piece of property down in Fort Meade to a friend, and the neighbor next to him, I don't know, you know, I don't want to say he's an alligator breeder. I don't know that those exist, I have, no, but no. he, like, hatches these alligators. Yeah, that's what part of the process that we were we okay. were in the very beginning where we're actually harvesting the eggs yeah and the state of florida will let you harvest uh, at, at one time i don't know exactly how it is today but at that time they were letting you harvest uh, 50 percent of of the eggs that were on your place which I meant if you found 10 or 12 nests they let you harvest half of them yeah so and a, and a gator will lay 70 to 100 110 eggs i guess something like why that. don't we want more uh yeah, that's a good question yeah if, if, if you could if i could fly you over what i see in the lakes today it is these gators are enormous yes and there is so many of them that uh when i was a kid you could just about fly or uh fly here we, you could swim in any lake anywhere you wanted you really didn't have to worry too much about a gator Today, I'm not swimming in any of them. I've said this before. You will not catch me near a, a body of water. And I see these people in Florida that have, like, their dogs or their kids, and they're really close to the water. And I'm floored that they would do that just because of how many incidents there have been of a gator coming up and grabbing somebody or an animal. Um, but I know actually the same property that I sold in Fort Meade, um, Chad went to go fly it with the drone. And he said that there was just this massive alligator in one of the lakes that I think he could have run it over with his truck, but this thing was not moving. And Chad was like, I beeped at it. Like, you know, I needed to get over there. And this alligator was not going to well, be moved. Probably the, the worst thing that happens is people feed him. Yeah. And, and they become, they're not afraid of people. Yeah. Now you go out in the wild, you know, where, where they never see you. When they see you, they're gone. Yeah. No, no hesitation. But when you feed them, you create a problem. Yeah. And that's what happened with the lady the other day. Did you see her walking her dog down? The, down the, the, oh, yes. I think she was 90. Was she in her 90s? Uh, I don't know. But the, the gator actually came after the dog. Yes. And ended up catching her and actually drug her off in there and she's gone. I mean, it was it was pretty sad. I just had this conversation with a friend of mine where I said I'd rather fight a shark than an alligator because I'm afraid of the death roll from the alligator. Yes. That yes. is what truly, like, terrifies me. Um, but truth be told, I'd rather not encounter either of them. So <laughs> uh, anyway, so you have been in ranching. Yes. For the past... Um, how long now? Pretty much all, all of my adult life and most of my childhood. Um, it, I, I, I've worked on cattle ranches in, across the state of Florida my, pretty much my entire life. And uh, I was, uh, me and my wife have been married 31 years, and we started taking care of her dad's place probably, uh, it's been over 20 years ago, and, and I've had this huge opportunity that not many people would ever have. Uh, I mean, I, I just can't thank him enough. Uh, he just, he, he, I worked for it, worked very hard. I mean, my first paycheck was $250 a week, but we, me and my wife took took over and we grew it and we, we built a uh, feeding business, preconditioning cattle. Uh, it's called Charlie Creek Livestock. The ranch was D.T. Davis Ranch, which... It still is, but and then unfortunately in February of this year we lost my father-in-law at 86 years old. He lived a great life. Yeah, good man, a mentor to me, and and uh, so uh, that was pretty tough. But you know we've um, uh, we've we've had a we've great opportunity because of him. Yeah, yeah. So. And how long did he have your farm? 
he, he actually inherited it himself from his parents. Okay. And uh, they, that's, that's, a, that's kind of a, a neat story. Real quick, uh, they would buy huge tracts of land, like 100,000 acres at a time, his, his parents would and grandparents, and they would cut all the timber off of it. They were in the timber business, a place called Nocatee Crate Company in Nocatee, Florida, which is south of Arcadia. Never heard of it. Yes. So anyway, they, they were a sawmill business, and they, they, they harvested pine trees. Mm. And then the, back then, the land wasn't worth anything. So after they harvested all of the, the pine trees, they would give the land back to the state because they didn't want to pay the taxes. No kidding. That's an absolute truth. So uh, Wow. Like, in, you know, I've heard stories from family members that, you know, they owned part of downtown Sarasota, right? You know, and they was like wasn't worth anything, so, so they just why, it right why back. pay the taxes on it? So, and we were lucky where we live right now is is a place that they really liked, and uh, so they held. Well, thank on goodness. To, yeah, really. <laughs> so yeah, that's incredible. Um, and so I actually we were talking on the phone a couple of days ago, and um, I don't plead ignorance when it comes to ranching, but I also. I'm not an expert at all. And so when I would hear people come in and talk about working cattle, and I always thought it just meant moving them from one field to another. But in fact, you said that it is a whole host of things. Yes, it can be any any time you're doing anything to your cattle from from vaccinating to to weaning calves, yeah, to, you know, selling the calls and that sort of thing. It's uh, uh um you're working cattle. So. Okay, now I know. Deworming and I do have a cowboy hat. Yes. So I could fit right in oh, down hey, there. I'd love it. I went to the rodeo. I went to the River Ranch rodeo. Oh, you went to River. Oh yeah. Ranch. Oh, oh yeah. Goodness. I've been twice <laughs> now. I love it. Okay, can I tell you a little story about River Ranch? Yes. Of course, first time I went, I think I was twelve, and uh, that is the longest running weekly rodeo in the history of the United States. Really? Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. I had a, such a good time, and then we took an airboat tour off of like maybe Kissimmee, Lake Kissimmee or something. Kissimmee like that. River in yeah. probably Lake Kissimmee, yes. And it was really cool. But um, so I could fit in if I like really tried hard, I, you know. You know. That, <laughs> it's that, good to be adaptable. Yeah. Uh, so now, um, you know, that you, are you still planning to be in ranching or, you know, kind of where are you going with your career here at Saunders? Okay. What, what we did, and this is where I think that I can be very helpful to uh, people that were in the same position we are. You can be uh, land rich and money poor, and that's where I've been in my entire life. So, or well, since I've been married. So we we sold some land five five years ago now, um, and we ten thirty one the money and bought a shopping center over on the East Coast in the Vieira area and changed our lives. I mean, we, we took, it, and I, we sold 1,150 acres and we, we took that money and bought eight. And then we had to, <laughs> what, what we got for the 1,150 acres, we had to borrow that much again to buy the eight acres, mm -hmm. but it had seven stores on it um, and they were all brand new. And so we, we went into the commercial business, uh, commercial real estate. So um, it was life-changing for us. It was the hardest decision we ever made. Oh. And we, we, we've got a strong Christian faith, so it was a lot of praying. Mm -hmm. you know, Lord, guide us. Mm -hmm. What do we do? So anyway, we, we, we did. We sold land, bought the commercial real estate, uh, changed a lot for us. So I, I think I see a lot of... Uh, families, I see people that have land, and, and you, it becomes worth so much money in Florida, and it's just the direction we're going. Um, that's why I like the conservation easement program. Um, anyway, so that when it becomes worth so much, uh, you know, families are selling out. You yeah. just can't. It, yeah. I mean, there are millions and millions of dollars. You, you can't afford not to sell it. Yeah. And, and not only that, you're just being surrounded by 
development and yeah that sort of thing so mm-hmm. so you end up selling and and these people are taking the money and they are buying another big ranch somewhere and maybe keeping some of the money whatever whatever but then i, I hear about them you know this has been going on for a good while now i grew up in st cloud so i i watched this you know when i was in high school and uh so many people have you know you hear about them they got just all this money for their place and they bought another ranch and then you know you hear about them like you know they're they're struggling again there's an opportunity in the state of florida to sell your property 1031 the money put it into some commercial real estate because there's a lot of it a lot of it and uh and put it something income producing and then you can you can then what a really smart guy that I, i was my baseball coach um and uh when I was a kid in St. Cloud, and he he owned a lot of grove and a lot of cattle, and he started buying commercial real estate. And then he started sending me cattle in our feedlot. We got a feedlot, and he would send me a lot of cattle, and, and he kept telling me, Mike, you work too hard. You you know, you and your wife, you love each other, you, you're young. And he said, you just work too hard. All you do seven days a week, work, 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 and that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. And um, he said, you need to let your money work for you. Well, he kept, he did this for three or four years. He would tell us this. And then finally I was like, I got serious with him, and I, you know, cause I was getting tired. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, he, he explained to me what he had done through the years. And he said, you, you do it. You make the right decisions and you 1031 that money from the land that you sell. And, and you, you, you put it in good, smart investments. And he said, one day you'll buy your ranch cause you want it, not because you need it. Mm. So, when we've got we've got a, a real nice place where we live now. We, we're still on the same ranch. We just sold somebody. Right. And uh, and I'm getting ready to do. Uh, we're we're looking into right now. We just signed a uh, an agreement with Saunders, and we're going to we're we're looking into a uh, conservation easement. Oh, great. So and uh, so what that way we feel like that would honor my father-in-law because yeah. that's. Where the ranch actually, the ranch we live on, is all started right there. What we got left, which is about six hundred oh, okay. acres, I guess. And uh, so, we're going to put it into an east uh, into a conservation easement, and it'll never be developed, and it'll be left as a cattle ranch, or we'll be able to do some farming. Right. But uh, it'll be a great great way to honor him. Well, you're in good hands. You've got the king of conservation easements, right? He is right in this he, building. He he <laughs> is the. He he's, is a conservation he's, easement. He's a big deal. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's the real deal too. So you know, you're definitely he'll be able to get you guys what you want. Yes, right. And what an operator! You know, I can't say enough about Dean. I've heard about him all my, you know, all my adult life. You hear, you know, Dean Saunders and this and that. And and I, I mean, not not that the other brokers here are not great in their own rights because they are, but Dean certainly. Uh, he certainly he's spearheaded some of the the uh, conservation stuff, and he's just he's made some of the biggest deals, not only in the state of Florida but in the country. In, yeah. in a sense, and yeah. he's uh, he's amazing, and just he's what I what I call an operator, you know. And uh, to give you a definition of that, an operator would be Elon Musk. Okay, there's not many of these guys in the world, but Dean is he. You know, I put him in that category. Yeah. He's just, uh, super motivated he never stops he's, yeah if he's awake he's he's, <laughs> he's thinking about real estate i am the total opposite i'm like this is my given hours and you might reach me you might not <laughs> so i need to be more of an operator at this point but yeah no i get it i mean it's just something that um you know, I think people like live it, breathe it, and it's just their whole life. And, you know, it's their whole being. And so those are the people that, you know, make a really big impact. They do. And, yeah. you know, are the creme de la creme. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, so we got a, we got a great leader here and, and, um, I'm just really excited to yeah. start my career right here. And, uh, I'm, and so tell me, uh, so you're going to be doing or, uh, working with ranch owners or farm owners, and this is kind of your um, target market because I'm sure you have a ton of contacts and relationships um, already in place with 
ranchers, farmers. Got got a big network of people yeah. that I've done business with and that I know, and I, you know, we've all grown up together, and uh, we're all getting that age now that you know we're. So yeah, I do have I do have a pretty good uh, uh, support. Well, I would say support team, but I got a I got a pretty good network of people that I've I've done business with, and and I think that uh, the, the helicopter is going to be a great way, a bird's eye view of you know if somebody wants to sell their place, you know I'll help them get as much as we can get for it, um, and uh, the the good the good thing is I I don't. You know, I don't have to depend on sale of a piece of property to, to stay alive. I, this is kind of another stream of income that yeah. my wife had kind of uh, decided that we, you know, we pursue. And she, she is my partner, no doubt. Uh, I am very technically challenged. <laughs> so. As are many up here. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in the same boat as many, many, many. It's a lot, of, it's a lot to learn when you first come on. It's a I lot to just, learn. I, I just get overwhelmed. Then yeah. I, I don't. I've never run a computer much to start with. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I, I went. I went ahead and bought a Mac, which is supposed to be the best. And uh, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah. And it, and so my wife, she's never. My kids got Macs, and they were. Yeah. Like, oh, Dad, you got to. Yeah. It. So I did, and I'm lost, and I don't. I just get. I, I do things on it all the time. It locks. Heck, I'm not very good. <laughs> I'm not very good. I think you'll learn, but you know, I think that, that, you know, you have, um, I mean, you have a helicopter license, so I think that that outweighs the tech side of this. I think that it's way cooler to look at a property in a helicopter than it is on Google Maps. I'm, I know that I would be more impressed with riding in a helicopter over, you know, acres and acres of land than I would be if somebody pulled it up online. So at least I, you've got that in your, you know. Well, I I, I appreciate that, and I I, I hope that. Uh, yeah. I, I hope a lot of people. Feel and so you will be showing property in your helicopter. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I, and also, you know, I and I know there's a, there's a lot of agents that probably own airboats, but um, I I've got an airboat, so if it's a lower low low land or on the edge of a lake, and we can jump an airboat, go look at, you know. Can you go from the helicopter to the airboat? I could. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I don't. I can't turn the helicopter into an airboat. But I can. <laughs> not yet. Not. <laughs> we'll see what happens later this year. Um, no, I think that's really cool. And actually, I don't think. I mean, I'm sure that it's happened, Chad. You would know better than I would about um, agents showing in an airboat. Mm, we don't have any agents that I know of that have shown properties on airboats. Quite a few of them have boats and have sold uh islands yeah um yeah but i don't know that anybody has an airboat yeah no you're airport. you're like uh you know well yeah uh, you're the guy to I, beat now you're everybody else has to go out and get these really cool toys airboats and helicopters and although i would not trust a lot of them in a helicopter i would not get in a helicopter with most of the people here so well i i can tell you when it comes to flying a helicopter which uh, there's you know, we could talk about, I could talk about it for hours, but um, it's uh, something I don't get in if I'm tired. Yeah. I don't, go, first of all, the weather, you, you know, what I always say is uh, we're going to, we can, we're going to plan on driving and if the weather is good, okay. we'll fly. Yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing is uh, I, I like a glass of wine, but never if I'm flying. Yeah. Um, and you've got, you have to be on your A game. When yeah. you get in that helicopter, you have to have, you know, uh, you're, you're a pilot. That's where the cowboy hat comes off, the pilot hat goes on. And, um, but, but it is a great way to show property. Oh, yeah. I think that is so cool. I've only, I heard about, um, and it was a place in California. It might have been Beverly Hills or something, but um, there was, you know, a couple hundred million dollar home and part of the perk uh was that they got to tour it by helicopter was that they got to be flied oh, wow. you know flew in flied in flew Fla- in flown, flown in flown in oh Whoa. flown in <laughs> cut that out have michael cut that out flown in i swear I'm, <laughs> i swear i'm 
I, I'm not an I'm not like a total idiot, but I guess I can't I can't swear to that by now. But anyways, uh, flown in to the house and then they got to tour it, and it was like you know obviously they had to produce proof of funds and stuff like that but wow. that's the only other time i've heard of that so i think that is so cool and going to be such a fun you know marketing tool for you and um really attract i think some really cool buyers well i i, I think so too and, and i hope i mean that's that's my plan and uh it's it's about developing de developing them relationships and fiduciary relationships yeah with, with like a, a like you think of it as from a uh, uh like a developer's perspective yeah it that maybe he lives in another state and he can he might want two or three or four properties he needs to look at but he's only got a day to do yeah. it yeah he can fly down here in a commercial jet uh, or even if he's got his own airplane he can fly down jump in my helicopter and we can go look at all the properties in a couple of hours yeah and uh, as long as they're not too far apart and 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 he can be on his way back to to his office you know incredible so i i think that uh I think it'd be beneficial. Oh, for sure. And especially with, um, you know, like you said, if you're looking at three different properties that are thousands of acres, um, I would think that that would save a lot of time. And I think it's really nice that you want to really kind of guide and help your friends or, you know, current professional relationships um, do the same thing that you and your wife have, have been able to do. Because I think that's truly like important to care about uh, in real estate. You know, obviously everybody is looking to, you know, make their commission and, uh, you know, get as many deals as they can. But I think it's nice that you are wanting to impart wisdom, you know, that you've been given um, to your to your buds. Well, I, I I just have seen a lot of people sell out and and just really didn't help their financial situation and uh, and even though they got you know, a lot of money and uh so i mean let's be honest it's there's everybody thinks if you own land and cattle you're rich <laughs> they just think that but i promise you that's not the case <laughs> I, I don't know that you make a strong case though if you've got an airboat and a helicopter so i, I got commercial property <laughs> See, see that's how it all comes back to commercial. I'm gonna keep saying that for our land guys, although our land guys are usually the ones that are in our top, top agents uh, for the year. But yeah, you gotta get the you you gotta sell a couple commercial uh, properties before you can get the helicopter. Yeah, well, no, you you got to you wait you, you you've <laughs> got to sell your property. Okay, and then take your 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 1031 money and buy the commercial property okay that produces that income see yeah. it's you know to at a to own a ranch you're going to get up you know set it never goes away yeah seven days a week especially when we feed cattle and we we had a you know charlie creek livestock was me and my wife's little baby we we it it we actually went to making money when we were doing that but it's seven days a week and it never leaves yeah you're, you're on your way out you know, we're going to go to dinner one night and you're pulling out and all the help's left and you look and there's a big steer that's bloated, which is something you probably don't understand. But, well, there goes dinner. We got to go saddle a horse and pin the steer to save his life. Aww. So um, it never leaves. Yeah. So and, and my kids thought that uh, that Christmas was spent in the feed yard because we would let all oh my God. Help, we let all of our help go home and we would work Christmas Day. Yeah. It, and to make you know so they could be with all our help could be yeah with family. merry christmas kids this yeah. is your christmas gift you get to get out there and work yeah yeah so, so. <laughs> and now do, are your kids and ranching too uh my daughter is okay she is uh she, i'm a little surprised after having to work on christmas that she'd want to she'd want to go into that well she married a cowboy so okay she, there you have it she has no choice but now my son now he's a film major Right, you were saying he's in Atlanta. I yeah, think. Yeah, he's in Atlanta. He works right. for a company called Keslo Camera. Keslo Camera, I think. I'm not sure. Kes Sounds good to me. Like I'll believe you. So, <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's uh, he's been on a lot. You know, he's he's been on a lot of big sets. Yeah. He's uh, that's it. Uh, he went to school at Full Sail University in Orlando. Yeah. Got a film degree, and then went to Atlanta, and he's been working up there in the film industry. 
Excellent. Yeah, I guess um, if I had to work on Christmas, I would be like, yeah, you won't, I, I won't be in this long. My, my son, he's just like, he, he's, he doesn't want anything to do with that. <laughs> so, but, he, but he has a huge respect for it. He does. Well, yeah. He does. We all know that, you know, that's, that's without agriculture, none of us survive. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, especially in Florida, it's just so important and such a big part of our economy. Um, right. You know, and I think it's um, wonderful that you want to conserve, you know, what you have. And um, I know that a lot of people, I should say, I know that when development starts coming to your neighborhood, right. it's very scary. And, you know, there's a lot of pushback because you don't really know what's going on and you don't know what to expect. And um, it's just a lot of new and you don't want things to change and you want to be able to ride your horse somewhere or, you know, ride your buggy or whatever it is. Um, and so I know a lot of times with brokers, you know, we get a lot of flack for <laughs> selling develop to developers. There are brokers who do who do conservation, like Dean, and hopefully you. And uh, you know, I think that that is a really remarkable thing for our economy as well, because you're really preserving that land and making sure that uh, you know it's going to stay. My my prediction in conservation easements is this: I, I looked into doing it on on our place 15 years ago, and it just wasn't worth. You're selling your development rights, and at that time, you're thinking, okay, you're your development rights down the road one day is what makes your property worth all the money. Um, but this is Mike's, this is Mikeology, okay? That okay. Makes sense. Uh, I believe this. Today, there's actually, you can actually, for your conservation rights, for your development rights, you can actually, you get money. Really. Yeah. And it's, it's 40 to 50% of the value of your property. So if you if they value your property at five million, they, there's potential two to two and a half million dollars you could put in your pocket. Now that's where you take that money and you go buy a couple of dollar generals, put it in commercial property, de and develop an income. Okay, and it takes it takes the uh, the pressure off of of pounding the pavement. Well, you don't pound the pavement on a ranch, but pounding the dirt, and uh, and it really helps. And so when 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 I first looked into it. It wasn't that much money. It wasn't nearly that. So it was like, to me, it wasn't worth it. You're going to sell your development rights. Okay, this is what I think. I think in 20 or 30 years down the road, you will still in the state of Florida be able to buy a ranch. You'll be able to buy a farm. Right. And you'll be able to buy recreational property. But somebody else would have already sold the development rights. Right. Okay, so they all took advantage of that. So there's going to be properties in Florida that will never be developed because today somebody sold a development rights 20 years down the road those properties will sell but the, the kicker is they will sell for a lot of money just like they did have the development rights. right right okay and that's what we're seeing right now we're seeing properties that are being resold that had conservation easements and these properties are bringing really good money yeah more than you would ever expect it so and, and if you go to the midwest or anywhere out west, and you buy a ranch, or a farm, uh, any property whatsoever, the mineral rights were sold before to some to a previous owner sold, and took the they they made the money off the mineral rights. Okay. Okay. You can always buy a piece of property out there, but getting the mineral rights is. I I've say, heard this. They, yeah. It's probably, you. You probably no, can't. No, there's. I would say ninety percent of the places that right. sell. You're you're not going to have any mineral. Even rights. if that land isn't being used for that purpose, I've heard that it is still impossible to um, get the mineral. Yeah, rights, buy the mineral. Rights. So I feel like twenty or thirty years in Florida, you can still buy ranch, farm, recreational property, but there will be no more. The the conservation easement will be on the property. Okay. Somebody else will have sold, took advantage of that opportunity because it is actually an opportunity if you look at it today. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you get into the right programs, 
it, it's I, it's a win win in my in my point of view. Yeah, the way I see. It. And then you know you get to sit back and collect your mailbox money, which is what everybody wants, I right? It. I love it. Like you can just you don't have to work anymore. You just go out to the mailbox, or and it's right there, and then you know you don't have to worry. Yes, and and the good part about it is now is because all this technology that you and my wife and whoever else <laughs> understands, I'm still learning. Uh, you don't even have to go to the mailbox anymore. That's it's just, right. It's, it's, it's all done instant. electronically. Yeah, that's right. It can so, just be. But, it, but we like to use the mailbox. Yes, of course. Um, I mean, I think that's what everybody is, you know, kind of reaching toward and wanting. And um, I've said it before on this podcast and other people have said it as well. But real estate, you know, they don't make any more of it. So it's really a, a hot commodity because, you know, I mean, there's only so much to go around. And, um, you know, obviously things can be sold again and again and again. Um, but I just, I really do believe in, in real estate being, you know, not necessarily that it's stable because obviously we have to learn from the past as well, but they're not making any more real estate. So get what you can, That's right. uh, you know, in the smartest way possible, and then you'll be set for life. And I just think it's really great that um, you're going to be able to, why did I say to? It's two. You'll be able to uh, help people out and, you know, based on your own experience. I think that that's wonderful. You're like practicing what you're preaching. Well, and I think that's the advantage of being my age and starting a, a real estate career. I, I've got, uh, I've, I've, what I know about real estate, I was always the client. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, I think that'll be an advantage in some areas. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, selling 1,100 acres isn't a small feat. So you've already got a lot of experience, uh, you know, lived. And I think, I think that's wonderful. Well, I, I think it, uh, I think a, we here in this office could help a lot of people realize their, their real estate dreams. Really. Yeah. I mean, you, and, and in the conservation easement, you can still keep your place and you can get enough money that you can take that money and invest it smartly yeah. and, and create a stream of income that you may, uh, that you may have never realized. Yes, I agree. And so what are your next steps, uh, in order to get your real estate career off the ground? Are you sending out mailers? Are you calling people? We're in and the process right now. We're, we'll have the, are you going to fly a banner behind your, your helicopter? <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, I'll take 10% of whatever you know. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, no, I'm working with the girls here in the office, and uh, and Eli, he's I hear he yes, wants, he's great, and but uh, he, yeah, he he did my bio and he made me sound important. I was like, hey, I'm, like <laughs> I'm gonna keep this guy around me. That's right. So, anyway, uh, no, the girls in here are wonderful. What a great staff! I'm yeah. telling you, well, what a professional outfit uh, he, we are right here. We yeah, I'm part of the outfit. Yes, you so, are. Yeah, I'm on the teams. Yeah, it's just great. And these podcasts, wow. I mean, who else does that? Well, we try, you know, I mean, I want to say that I try more than Chad, but Chad, what do you think? I put in some effort. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Chad's um, always here. We were definitely hesitant when we started, uh, not knowing what direction that we wanted to go in and uh, kind of just felt it out as we went and got some of our our tenured agents, uh, our brokers, uh sit down just talk to us and tell us what was important about their their job and how they enjoyed helping people and kind of branched out from there and getting outside guests in and uh you know partners of the business uh, and yeah. yeah i i feel like it's it's grown to a, a good uh definitely sustainable level right now yeah. and hopefully yeah, we have fun, yeah. you know. Oh, I, I see that. We have a lot of fun. The staff has a lot of fun. It, they're just wonderful people. Um, and they really do help agents to be able to market. Because I really am not great at marketing. You know, I, I've never been good at that. I'm good at, you know, task. I can do anything. Not anything. <laughs> Most things. <laughs> Most things. Maybe not even most. Anyways, yeah, I can do what I can do. do. I can do what I can do. Um, well, I mean, you're good at this. So. They, <laughs> barely. But they, you know, 
they are just wonderful at being able to give you the tools to be like, this is what you can say about yourself. And it's all true. You know, it's just things that you don't think of. Oh, you would never think to say these things, you know, in real life. It's, it's easy. Yes. It, to, to, for some people, it just is so, so, uh, yeah. so easy. To, it comes by really easy. But, um, uh, yeah, the, as far as what I'm doing, is, yeah. I'm, I am, uh, I'm running, uh, ads in the Cattleman's Magazine, oh, okay. the Heartland Magazine, which covers seven counties, the seven counties that I'm kind of starting out in. And, uh, uh and, and I'm, I've, I'm going to do every trade show I can. And, yeah. And, but see, I've, I've also had that experience of building, building a company, you know, I helped build DT Davis Ranch and then we did Charlie Creek Livestock and, and, um, and, you know, I did all the trade shows and I, I, I kind of understand that part of it yeah. way better. And I'm always, and I'm better at point. Like, hey, do this and do that. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm going to do it myself. So I know. Um, no. Except for these, this, the girls in the office that are helping me. Now. But you said something on the um, phone the other day that I really, really liked. And I am trying to, you know, incorporate that into my own practice. And that is you are your own real estate company. Yes. You know, I mean, you solely are responsible for you and you have to run you like a company. You know, you have to keep track of it. You have to do all the clerical work. Yes. You have to do all of the ancillary. Ancillary? Work. Yes. And <laughs> I'm really struggling here. Um, I only had decaf coffee today. I think that's why. I didn't have like a lot of caffeine. Well, that could be a problem. You know? Right. So maybe I should never try that again. But, um, you know, you are responsible for making sure that you're going to stay up and running. And it's really hard. You know, sometimes you don't want to do those things. But with you having all of this experience, it's like you will be able to hit the ground running. I hope so. I hope so. And, and it's all about it. And it's it, sometimes it's hard to be self-promoting. But that's yes. what you have to be. You have to be self-promoting it. And, uh, well, I, you know, I really have a problem with coming off. I don't want to sound salesy. You know, I don't want to be talking to somebody just, you know, casually and then be like, yeah, well, this ranch, I'm going to be like, I can sell it for you. You know, like, I don't right. want to come off like that. And really, I think the reason that our brokers have been successful, why I think that you'll be successful is because you have these relationships already that these people are going to start thinking about you whenever they start thinking of selling their land or buying land. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and even, even though, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people that I'll, I'll list their, their ranch or their farm. I, I didn't know beforehand, but we're the same kind of people. Yes. You know, and they know, Hey, you know, Mike came from the background. He yep. understands. And, and, um, so a I, man of the people. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> And, uh, and these are your slogan on your on your on your banner. <laughs> Although, so. I think for the people might might come after you for that. But uh, no, I uh, I think that's wonderful, and I really do think that you have such an advantage with your helicopter tours. I think that's going to be wonderful. I hope so. I hope I hope we're right about that. And, oh yeah. Uh, um, but but anyway, the, the, like I, I I taught my kids. Uh, when they were growing up, if you'll ask either one of them, um, we were talking about change. Is I, I preached to them, there's only one thing in the world that ever stays consistent, and that's change. Yeah. It's always going to change. Yeah. So you just got to change with it. So uh, and You got to be adaptable. You have to be, yeah, adapt. And there's a, a military um, quote, and I can't remember exactly how it is. It's, uh, you got, anyway, something about adapting. Mm -hmm pushing on or whatever but yeah you adapt and overcome Ad adapt and overcome are you military no sir no <laughs> you got a military father uncle grandpa no that's just chad's life is adapting and overcoming <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh um no well do you have any any like funny stories you can share with us or oh gosh uh, uh give me a, a some give me something what Oh no, it's okay. I got it. I got it. Chad, for the for our listeners, Chad will hold up signs to me, um, letting me know like my minute mark or if I'm hit, you know, if I'm clicking my tongue too often or whatever. Um, and so sometimes, you know, he'll hold up those little signs for me, and my guests are always like trying to read it, and I'm like, I got it, I got it. <laughs> uh, no, let's see here. Anything funny with 
Um, Chan? Mm, ever got anybody on uh, snipe hunting with... Uh, <laughs> Yes, I have. Hidden bags and we've done it. <laughs> yeah, I had it done on me too. I was I was a snipe hunter one time. Oh yeah. And then, uh, but I I pulled it. Actually, I'll tell you I'll tell you a funny story. You all right? Do all right. you know what the skunk ape is? I do. No. Yeah. Skunk ape is the Florida Sasquatch. It's the Bigfoot of Florida. Okay. Okay. So we I've had so much fun with this. Uh, I've got a Sasquatch suit. Stop. Okay. So we, we have, I, I, it, my, my son brought home some of his buddies from college. And they, these kids are from all over the country. One's from Washington, uh, Oregon, um, New York. I mean, they're, they're from all corners. And they're all smart kids, way smarter than me. So, and it's just funny. They, they come to a ranch in Florida, you know, and they're, they're meeting oh, yeah. Cage Dad. My son is so... Uh, he's so laid back that he he never he wouldn't tell you where he come from or what he does. I mean, they came to to the house. They're coming to a ranch and they're going. We didn't even know Cade knew how to ride a horse. Oh my god! You know, and <laughs> this kid, you know, he 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 was in high school rodeo and all. Yeah. That, but he just so laid back. For instance, he was on the couch one day, and and I come home, come in, and I said, Hey, son, I said, you learn anything at school today? And he said, No. I said, Did you go to golf practice? He said, Yes, sir. I said, what did you shoot? Because they played nine holes every afternoon. And uh, he said, like a 32. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. That's 32? incredible. Yeah. I said, 32? I said, and he's watching TV, right? Eating him some something. And I said, 32? I said, son, ain't that pretty good? And he goes, yeah, it's probably the best game I ever shot. Stop. So, I mean, that's He's how not I'm... a self-promoter. Oh, no. He's no. not a self-promoter. No, and it will, it will, one day it'll bite him. Okay. <laughs> So, so anyway, so he brings these kids home and, and, uh, and me and him had this planned. Okay. Stop. So we, we're sitting around, it gets dark and, and, uh, my, my son goes, uh, dad, tell, tell him about the skunk ape. And I was like, oh, Cage, you know, I don't believe in that crap. <laughs> and he goes, no, come on, dad, tell him. And I was like, well. I really don't believe it. I said, your grandpa does, because he said he's seen one. I've never seen one. They're like, what, what, Mr. Mike, what, what is it? And I, and I said, well, it's like the Florida Bigfoot, you know. So, and they, so they had, they, they're, they're just, now they're digging. Yeah. Tell us about it. So anyway, um, so we had this all planned. So I said, well, you can always tell when the, the skunk apes around, I said, because if like if there's a a dead animal like we knew we knew where there was a dead deer Ugh. and and went down i looked at the way that deer was laying because we were, i was looking for this like for a week ahead of time oh my like, gosh. i gotta find something i knew they were yeah coming. so i found this deer and that had died i don't know excuse me i don't know if the deer died from i don't know how he died yeah anyway coyotes had pulled him apart and the head was like you know the head of this dead deer was pulled away from his oh. body. So, so I I looked at that and I used this as as a, I said, all right, so you can always tell when one's around because like if there's a dead deer or something, his head will be always <laughs> pointed a certain way. So, I, I got these kids, you know, they're like anyway, and uh, so um, so a little while later, my my son goes, Dad, we're gonna go ride around. Well, Stop. You know. He so, knew where it was. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We, we so he went around there and and, and they they shine this dead deer or whatever and, and oh, they're all oh, that's like your dad said you know <laughs> oh so it's the whole this whole time i'm getting the suit on and i'm i'm going to back behind the house right he took them on a big journey where they thought they were really way deep in the woods yeah they're really not they're on like the first them. like five acres yeah. of the house yeah. yeah yeah so i'm in the woods back there and, and they come and all i did was just i just kind of jogged it just got in front of them and and for just a just that quick right now and I ain't on stilts or anything like that. Now, I'm in a real, like a bona fide Sasquatch suit. That's a pretty good one. So, anyway, so, oh, my goodness. These, these boys screamed, and they, they, <laughs> they took off, right? So, anyway, so now I've got to beat it back yeah. to the house. Oh, yeah. So, 
I get back to the house, and I mean, I'm as I'm running, you're I'm like pulling, taking I'm the yep, this yep. suit off, and I'm wore out, and I get back to the house, and just as soon as I jump in my chair, they come in the front door, and I'm like, yeah, that's right, I, I yeah, like I'm yeah. not breathing hard, and and they they uh, they were like, Mr. Mike, there's somebody <laughs> on the property, and I was like, boys, I said, wait a minute. I said, Kay, did you feed the dogs? You know, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm acting like, it, and and uh, he's like, yeah, Dad. I said, what, what's going on? They said, he had a foot on Shaq. He said, <laughs> he had Shabaka hair. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh and I'm going, gosh. I said, Kay, what are y'all drinking? <laughs> so we just, anyway, so these smart kids that all go to yeah, Full Sail University yeah. are, are freaking out yeah and my son said it was the most grueling thing every party they went to for the next three months that's right that was the topic he said they were all talking about bigfoot and they all called their parents wherever their i parents love were that from, and they were talking about it so what we did is we set another deal up they came to the house and they were out at a, an area where we we cook and stuff and, and they were around this fire pit and, and uh, I put that suit on, and I jumped in the middle of them. One of them screamed, and there was beer. And, <laughs> and then, then they go, ha, 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 Mr. Mike, but that thing was a lot bigger than you. <laughs> You're like, no, it was no, me. And they're like, like, no, no, we really saw they, it. Oh, they were so embarrassed. They'll so, go, they'll so, like uh, tell their children about that. They'll go to their uh, graves thinking that they, that they saw. Oh, it was so funny. and, and uh, That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, that's a funny story. I love that. That is, uh, did you ever fly your helicopter in that suit? That's a good idea. <laughs> no, but I, we do do the Easter Bunny, and we 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 got a pretty big family. So last year we, um, my nephew got in the yeah in the in the bunny suit, and and we uh, I flew him into all the little kids. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's amazing! So that's that so fun. Cool. I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Obviously, you know I can't wait to hear about your real estate career and I'm how well so, you're going to do. I'm so excited. I'm, I really am. Oh, yeah. Excited. I think that it's going to be wonderful. And um, you're going to be doing the Lord's work out there, helping these other ranchers and farmers. And Yes, well, thank you. You know? I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll have to catch back up with you, uh, you know, in a year. Yeah. See how many yeah. helicopter tours you've done. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm I'm ready. Let's. I'm going to put it in my Google calendar so it'll even alert me. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see. Oh, yeah. Doing. I think that you're going to be great, and, uh, you know, we'll see a lot of 1031s coming out of your <laughs> coming out of your work. I hope so. Oh, yeah. Chad, do you have anything else to add? No, I know you said that you aren't very technologically advanced, but where can people find you at? Uh, you on social media at all? I, good question. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you, that's, I'm working with this, with the group in here, and they're, they're great. But no, I'm getting ready to, I'm going to probably start some sort of a YouTube channel okay. and I'm going to get on social media and it's going to be, I'm getting cameras now for my helicopter. Great. So me and my wife, like if we go to dinner, we can record the whole thing. They can edit it down. And at the end of it, you know, Hey, look at this ranch that I just listed. There you go. So. I love it. Okay. Well, then we'll see you on social media and for anybody looking for him in the meantime, they can find him on our website. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Thanks Thank for coming you, in. Mike. Thank you. Oh, thank y'all for having me. Thank you very much.